Hi everyone. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. So um, welcome everybody to this new day, um, beginning the emotional week of Aquarius with if such a thing really exists. This is not to criticize anyone from Aquarius. So good. I have been borrowed a huge board. So if I use it, I will disappear. So today uh, we begin with the week in which we are going to go through the path of the zodiac. Um, so today with the crown chakra, we will begin with Aquarius constellation. So first of all, let's try to see what are the zodiac signs so we can understand why they are so important for us. And also like this, we will be able to understand better our whole week. So now we, we will try to remember what we have learned about the constellations and how we see them. Hmm? So first of all, remember that here we have something called the Cancer Tropic and Capricorn Tropic. Hmm? So remember that above this region, we have the Boreal constellations. That means the ones from the north. And here, from this line down, we have the Austral, Austral constellations, which means the ones in the south. <clears throat> in the middle, we have the tropical constellations. This doesn't mean that you can see them only here. This means that these constellations are seen half of the year above and half of the year below according to the seasons. That, that's why they, they are called the stationary uh, constellations because they are seen in, uh, in according to um, to the um, <clears throat> according to the um, solstice and equinoxes as the earth is moving mm -hmm. so now let's go into another thing this is more difficult to erase so now we are going to have this circle with the sun in the middle and the earth with the moon around here we have the sun, here the earth, and we have all the constellations around. When the earth is moving, when the earth is moving around in the circle around the sun, so our point of view, here we have an eye watching. Hmm? So we see the sun that is like in the house of Aquarius. So we perceive the sun moving through the houses of, of Aquarius, but it's us that is moving. So we perceive the sun moving there. And the time it takes for us to go through the through this, this vision of the sun, it's around 30 days. So it takes 30 days for this for the, from our point of view that the sun goes through Aquarius. Hmm? Okay. So it's because of that that we perceive every 30 days that the sun is moving into a different constellation. But it's not moving to a different constellation. We are moving, perceiving the sun moving around. So the whole circle will be 365 days, which is a year. Mm -hmm. Basically, the Earth will take 365 days, approximately 34 constellation, watching in these 30 days how the sun seems to move through these constellations behind. Hmm? The, the Earth, as you see here, is watching the sun through the equator. The tropics, in between the tropics, through the equator, is the region that sees the sun straight in a line. So as it goes around the circle, these regions are the ones looking into the sun. And that's why these constellations are called the tropical constellations because, because we see them from our point of view, straight 
to the sun. Mm? The reason why Aquarius is the one affecting us and not Leo when we are watching to the sun like this is because we perceive that the light of the sun is giving us the energy. So we receive the energy through Aquarius, through the sun, from Aquarius through the sun, and we can see it, we can perceive it. So Leo in this moment is in the other side, in the dark side. So we cannot see its perception, okay? Mm. So that's how it is. That's the, the point of view. Mm. Uh, depending on the solstice and the equinoxes, we will see these constellations still like this in the center or moving like, like um, all the perception would be that some of them are above and some of them are below. So it's dependent on winter, uh, summer, spring, autumn, that we will see these constellations moving around the, the planet in different ways, from north, south, or whatever. As the Earth is moving around, this means that it will take a path through these 12 constellations. And that's why, uh, by looking into the Sun, it knows that the energy of that moment is related to that constellation, which is behind the Sun. Hmm? So now, if we see this Aquarius here, because we are in, in the month of Aquarius, um, we will see that Aquarius is the opposite of Leo. And we can see here, Virgo is the opposite of Pisces, Aries the opposite of Libra, and so on. Taurus from Scorpio, Gemini, Gemini to Sagittarius, Cancer of Capricorn. Hmm? So they are opposites. So what it means, these oppositions, that when I am looking into Aquarius, like this month, Leo will be the one showing me the shadows. Okay? And when I am there in, with the Earth, looking into Leo, so Aquarius will be this, the one showing the darkness of Leo, okay? That's the opposite. So why the opposite? Basically because one side is light, is the day, and the other side is the night, of course. Easy. Hmm? So we are not the only planet here around the sun. Also we have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Hmm? So now, of course, that when we have these planets here, these planets are also in different constellations, as you hear, as you see here. So from the point of view of our Earth, as it moves, from our point of view, these planets are in different constellations. Hmm? So this means that these planets are bringing us the energy of that constellation. Mm -hmm. This is what shapes the astrological chart. Now, imagine that here we have a conjunction of planets in the same house, in Taurus, but then we have the opposition of planets from Scorpio to Taurus. These planets, Venus and Jupiter, will be like against each other, one showing the shadow of the other one, hmm? etc. So now remember that the reason why this affects us is because we usually see everything separated, but in reality, it's only one thing connected as, as one and projected in many. So everything basically here is only one thing. All the planets, everything is just atoms, it's just molecules. So when all these gravitational aspects, all these beings are moving around, they move this gravity with them through thousands and millions of years. That is why all of them affect us somehow like, like the parts of a clock that when one wheel starts to move, all the rest move with it. Okay, so that's the image that we have to, to understand from this. It's only one thing. So they are not different things. It's only one thing moving. The way the planets and the movement affect us is the same way in which a person that we love or we are related with um, uh, 
talks to us or affects us, it doesn't matter where we are. So maybe I am here and in the other side of the world, I have someone that tells me something that affect me. Like it doesn't matter if it is in the opposite side of the world. When I hear its voice saying something that bothers me or that makes me happy, it doesn't matter. I am affected like this, even if the person is far away. So the same way Jupiter can affect me from my perception of its movement through the subconscious and the unconscious. Hmm? <clears throat> so just to understand how they affect me, the first thing we have to understand is that we are one. So it doesn't matter what happened in the universe, we can feel it anyway, because everything is connected, everything is just one. So now let's understand why a planet or a constellation can affect us in the projection and the separation that we leave. Um, and the way we can understand this is in the same way as, for example, um, for example, when someone does something that we don't like or what or that that we like what i feel is only my perception it's not the other person that did something that affect me what the other person is doing is something that the other person is doing but how i am affected is only mine it's only my energy my perception Basically that, okay? This means that it's not the other one that is doing something to me. The other one is just doing something and it's me who perceive it in one way. It's my own emotion. So the same thing happened with the constellations and the planets. It's not that the planets are affecting us in a specific way. It's that us, in the subconscious and the unconscious are affected by the position of this planet. The position of this planet. And it's my position, my perception of, this, of that movement that makes me feel something. It's my point of view. It's not the other one that is doing it to me is myself perceiving that movement from my own point of view. So now to understand this, <coughs> the astronomy is speaking about the position of planets and constellations. And the astrology is the perception of the planets and the constellations. So it's not the reality outside, it's the perception of that reality. Hmm? So once said this, let's try to understand the difference between sidereal astrology and tropical astrology. So, the sidereal astrology is describing how the skies are in this right moment, the position of the planets in this very moment. So that's the astronomy. And the tropical astrology is exactly astrology because it's describing how I feel myself according to what I perceive from the skies right now. Okay, just to understand this. The sidereal astro astronomy describes the position of the things. Hmm? Describe the position of the skies, how they are in this moment, in this very moment, which makes that the tropical changes a lot. Because, for example, now we say that we are in Aquarius, but right now, in the sidereal astrology, it's not in Aquarius. 
we are still in Capricorn or <clears throat> I don't know. Yes, I guess in Capricorn. So we are still in Capricorn in the sidereal astrology. It's not Aquarius. Um, and why is that? Because the tropical astrology was designed 5,000 years ago when the northern star was Alpha Draconis. So the sky was totally different. So that's why they designed the astrology according to that northern star. So the tropical astrology was before the astronomy. But 5,000 years after that, when the northern star is Polaris, the constellations have changed. The position has changed. So that's why the tropical astrology is not fitting the sidereal astrology because the sidereal and the tropical were the same 5,000 years ago. You get it? It's like, so what? We are following something wrong because now we can say the planets are not in the constellations where they are, where they are supposed to be according to the astrology, to, to the tropical astrology. So now let's go to understand what the tropical, the tropical is not describing something from the outside. The, the tropical is not saying that constellation there is the one that is affecting me. The tropical is saying when this star or this constellation is there, I feel this. So the tropical is describing, <coughs> is describing the perception that I have from this planet when I see that star there. It's not that star, it's myself perceiving something while that star. To understand how these two work, let's do a very human example. Imagine that you are the Earth and you have to go to work every day and you are going to work, which is your opposite in the life because because we are, we, we are comfortable at home, so I go to work and I go back to my home. Hmm? So that cycle is like the year of the planet. Hmm? That's the cycle. Okay, so in that path, I find a stair usually in front of a bakery. So I find the bakery and there is a stair. And I never see the stair. So when I go there and I, how do you say, stumble? Like um, when you kick the, the, the stair and you are about to fall down. So when you're, when you're going to do that, every day you do the same and you just see the bakery. So you relate, you relate to fall down with the bakery. So that bakery is in background. But you, <clears throat> but you just see that and relate it with the stumble, okay? So pop, when you are about to fall down. So that's the perception that you have of you falling down, that you see, you relate the bakery with falling down, with stumble. Hmm? Um, so, so it's not the bakery that makes you stumble, it's the stair that you always forget, okay? So it's not, the bakery is not guilty because of that. It's just that when you see the bakery, you remember that you will stumble, okay? So that's the tropical astrology. It's like a constellation behind and something happens to you and your perception is that every time that you see the bakery behind, you will fall down. Okay, so what happened next comes the sidereal astronomy, astrology. The sidereal astrology is the one that says, yes, it used to be <coughs> a bakery, but now it's a shoe job. So now they are selling shoes. There's no more, ba no more bakery there. So because they are selling shoes, you maybe think that it's different, but it's not different because the stair is still there. 
and you will stumble again in front of a bakery. Uh, sorry, in front of a shoe shop. And the Cedar astrology is the one saying it's not much more, it's not anymore a bakery. Learn that. It's not a bakery, it changed. Now they sell shoes there. But you say, no, but when I fall down, I feel that that's the bakery because I used to be, there used to be a bakery. <clears throat> okay, so that's how um, we can understand both of them with a human example. Hmm? So it's not about to choose one or the other to rule my life. It's about to understand that one is telling me what is outside and the other one is telling me how I perceive within what is outside. So both of them are useful to understand what I feel and what is there. So what happened, what happened with the constellations? The name of the constellations are not related to what happened in the skies, are related to what happened here in this planet. So what was happening in this planet was the, was the thing that was determined how we call the constellations. So Aquarius, Pisces, Aries are just names of things that they were using and relating in that time. But they are not specifically, specifically related uh, to something in the skies. It's just stories to understand what happened in the earth. <clears throat> That's, for example, the year begin in the concept of the year begins in Aries. Why? Because Aries is the one that represents, is the stars that you see in the sky when the tragedy was taking part. What's the tragedy? Tragedy in Greek means the, the singing of the, of the ram, the singing of the ram. Why? Because they used to kill a ram to use the blood to make the ceremony for the sowing. And the sowing later comes with the bulls, the bulls opening the earth, so Taurus. And after the bulls comes the sharing of the seeds in Gemini, and then the water to water the, the fields in Cancer, and so on. What is happening? <coughs> what is happening in the um, uh, in the Earth is the thing that named that named the skies. Hmm? It's not the other way around. Um, ok. Por esto mismo, en la astrología tropical, lo que se cuenta no es un camino estelar, es un camino terrenal que se percibe mirando las estrellas. So the tropical astrology is not a path through the stars, it's a path of the earth that we understand when we see the stars, the position of the stars. Hmm? Um, so I hope this helps you to understand many things of the sky. So um, of course that maybe many of you have many questions or you didn't get this. So I'm trying to put all together like a summary of what uh, of all this. Um, So if you have more questions, for sure, there are many people here working as astrologists. So they would be, of course, happy to help you, I guess, to understand deeper in things that I don't know. Uh, <coughs> sorry, because I am, I am putting too much information in two languages. So, um, okay, sorry. <laughs> So for those who, who are asking how is a perception, how is possible of this uh, perception, um, so um, it would be good for you to see the previous videos in other months in which I spoke about what is 
perception, how everything is just a reflection. Mm -hmm. So each one of these ones is a trinity. So we have the trinity of air in Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and the trinity of water, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. We have the trinity of earth in Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo, and the trinity of fire. So each one of these trinities will have its body, its soul, and the spirit. The body of the fire is Aries, the soul is Leo, the spirit is Sagittarius. So these four here are the body of the Trinity. These other four are the soul of this Trinity. And then we have the spirit. Hmm? Okay, so this is the trinity of the whole path. So this is the body, this is the soul, this is the spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Body. Oh, sorry, ba body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Hmm? So during the whole week, we are going to go walking this path. <clears throat> so we are going to try to understand the trinities and the aspects of each one of them, of these constellations. So these constellations, not from the point of view of what I of what is in the sky, but from the point of view of what I perceive from the sky. And of course that because our body is not like this in a circle, we are like this, staring. The chakras and the constellations are in a different order. So that's why we are going to start by Aquarius related to the crown chakra. Hmm? All this explanation to tell you how is Aquarius. So it was a lot, but um, I rather, well, that's it. <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> My hair is a little bit chaotic today. Um, so what is Aquarius? Aquarius is basically the spiritual aspect of the Trinity of Air, which means that is the one that is connected to the mentalism, is the one connected to the mind, to the expansion of all the things. The huge mind of the universe is expanded in Aquarius. The whole thing, you cannot put structure on it. You cannot hold it in any way. It's constantly expanded in its freedom. So the key of this um, sign is to expand into the freedom. <clears throat> so it opens to um, to all the opportunities from the crown chakra. It's like the lotus flower opening to the whole universe. So Aquarius is, is the Aquarius is the the mind, the thoughts, is a network of thoughts, is the expansion of all the possibilities in the mind <clears throat> is the network of networks. So this is why when we speak that we are starting the age of Aquarius, it is related to the idea of the networks, of the idea of we are creating something new that is a network connected 
with many, with many things. It expanded in a network of thoughts. But this network cannot be only one in one way. It is infinite, like the mind itself of the universe. We need to create constantly a different kind of network to transcend the old one so we can expand and expand and expand more beyond our imagination. This is why in this new time, we cannot think on creating a network in which we are all doing exactly the same. We have to innovate. We have to do many things constantly, transform all the time. So if we are not opening ourselves to new networks, to new ways of doing things, we are not doing properly the task of Aquarius. And now what is the problem of Aquarius? That as the mind, it goes beyond, it can see the future, it can go all the time farther and farther, transforming everything. And the conflict is that it cannot live what is thinking. It cannot manifest. It's impossible for them to manifest something and live in harmony something. It's leaving everything constantly behind. So one of the things that we have with the energy of Aquarius is that usually abandon things because they don't hold the emotion of the things because they need to go transforming the future. So they are projected in the future, so they don't have any problem to live away the old things very fast. Like, oh, I don't need this anymore. I'm Now I want to do this new thing. So for most of us, for the rest of the signs, it's like you never know when they are, where, when they are going to abandon you or not be interested in you anymore. It's like just... Oh, yes, I'm not interested anymore. Bye. And leave away. Because they are the atmosphere, air, cold, and open expanse, expansion. So they, they, they cannot be attached to anything. They just expand. Basically, um, Aquarius is the great master of free will, of the one that is free of everything, of detachment. So, for example, the Leos, like, like myself, we are the opposite to Aquarius. So for, um, for Leo, that is looking for the control to have everything under control to have everything under the, the kingdom, the power of the king. And the other one, Aquarius, would be like, no, I'm free, I don't care, blah, 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 and disappear. So it's the hard work for the opposite, which is Leo. And now we are starting an era that is Aquarius. So we have to practice how to set ourselves free. Because otherwise it will make us be free very hard. And this is because uh, <clears throat> we are animals that live through, um, how do you say this? Um, um, oh, I forgot, costumbres, um, that we do all the time the same. Like, we get used to the things, so we are attached to emotions, we are attached to thoughts, so we speak that we want to set ourselves free, that we want to be free, we speak about freedom, no, oh, thank you, um, but we are animals of habits, thank you. Um, so, because, because we are attached to many things, um, for us really to experience what, is, what freedom really means is hard, it's really hard. So we have to practice that. If you want to start practicing that, I gave you just kind of a, of a 
tool, um, a practice that you can do. I wrote it in the blog and the post for today. Um, so you can do it. You can check it there and you can do it if you want. Okay. Um, <coughs> así que léanlo ahí para, porque no voy a explicar algo que ya escribí. Um, so read it there because I, I don't want to explain something that I already wrote. Um, so of course we are going to keep talking about Aquarius in the next um, days because we have the Trinity coming through and and of course we are in the week of Aquarius so we will speak about it uh, but above all the key for this month is detachment to let go set everything free Aquarius. That's the vibration for today. Ba. Ba. The statement for today is I am spiritual nourishment. The quote for today is fire in its aspect of light. In the great explosion originated in the beginning of things of cosmos, the spark lighted and lighted, oh, the spark lighted for the first time the light. The plasma generated by these waves and particles in the base of the, of the energy and shapes, <coughs> sorry, the plasma generated by these waves and particles is the base of the energy that shaped the essence of the universe. The second aspect of the fire trinity aligned with the soul's process. This way, the almic and information concepts that we call race, that, that like a rainbow, order informations and the universe and the universe's conscience. Let's go to the alignment. Sit comfortable, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. We start to focus only in our breathing. I become aware of the energy of my body, how it is expanded from my skin. from my muscles and organs and I pay attention becoming aware which parts of my body are coolest and which ones are hottest <coughs> I recognize that this energy that I feel, this heat, is the body of my soul, the 
positive and the negative that moves my life. My emotions. I feel how the energy of my entire body starts to move up as I breathe deep once and again, taking all this energy to my head, rising up, blossoming like a lotus of violet color, opening on the top of my head. I start to see how this flower opens so big that everything around starts to become the space in darkness and all I see above and around me is the constellation of Aquarius. As this flower opens more and more, I can perceive how my body sets itself free towards the cosmos, opening to the infinite of the universe, connecting to the infinite mind. I become aware of this fresh energy that set myself free from the patterns and beliefs, expanding me throughout the whole cosmos. I am free. And as I perceive and feel this freedom, as I take a deep breath of this fresh universe, I recognize that this is the nourishment of my spirit. Aquarius lives within me. I am Aquarius. And I vibrate, activating this divine nourishment.
I am the spiritual nourishment. I am the spiritual nourishment. I am the spiritual nourishment. I know, I know, I know. Inspiro conscientemente. Take a moment now to perceive, to pay attention to all the things that you are attached to, that you need to set free. All the things in your life that need to be expanded. Just think about them. Take a deep breath, bringing all these concepts between your hands. Take all that between your hands and with a deep breath, bring it towards your head to the crown chakra and set all of it free, opening your hands, pushing that to the cosmos, to the infinite mind of the universe, of all the possibilities. I know I am the spiritual nourishment. As I expand towards the cosmos, I bring this concept of freedom of the universal mind and I take it in between my hands to my mouth as this nourishment. And I eat the nourishment of freedom, this gift of Aquarius. I thank and honor all the mirrors of Aquarius that give me this gift of freedom. I take my hands to my heart and I thank.
and each one at its own time came back here and now. Thank you everybody for being there as always and see you tomorrow at the same time.